Lorena is with us in Texas. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Lorena. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> hey, so I've attended your financial peace classes um, a while back. I've been working on baby step two and three. I'm kind of in a bind on what to do with my home. Um, I live in a mobile home. The home is worth um, 35 to 40 k at the most. Um, I owe 72000 on it. Good Lord. I, bought, I know. I bought this home with my ex-husband. Um, I was totally against it. Uh, but, you know, you're married. Why'd you keep time. it in the divorce if you were against it? So, unfortunately, because um, I didn't want to, um, we were going back and forth during mediation on who was going to keep it. But because it's in my prop in my parents' property, um, he didn't want to keep it. I was still living in it with my three kids. Um, at that time, I wasn't making. Um, I was making eighteen thousand dollars a year. Um, now. Thank the Lord, I am a registered nurse now, so I'm in a little bit better in a position. But the home is kind of falling apart. I'm really kind of ready to get out of here, and I'm still deciding whether I should file for bankruptcy. How are you, you going to sell it if it's on your parents' property? So I can't. I've done research because I've been living here for about four years. I've done research on it. Nobody wants to refinance it. I I try to do like a short sell. He was totally against it and didn't very uncooperative with me. Um, yeah, but it, I mean, I just, the land would have to go with it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes. And unfortunately, at the time, they kind of screwed us. Uh, at the time that we bought the home, they didn't tell us that we weren't allowed to have two mortgages in one property. We found that I found that out now. No, maybe what I'm what I'm worried ago. about. You said you didn't want to get rid of it because it's on your parents' land. Do you own the land, or does your parents own it? My parents still own it. They still make payments on the land. Your parents own the land under the mobile home. Yeah. So there's two houses in the in the two acres, and so it can't be it can't be split because of course they don't own it. So and they don't want to keep it. I don't want to keep it. Um, it's falling apart anyways. Um, and I would really like, okay. So wait a minute. Enough. Let me, let me, uh, the, the, there is no land with the $35,000 mortgage. It's only on the mobile home or the $70,000 mortgage on the $35,000 mobile home. There's no land included in that deal. No, the, no. The land that's under it is in your parents' name, and they are paying payments with their regular house payment. They just let you sit it on their property. Yes, sir. Okay. Good Lord. What a mess. I know. Okay. Here's what I would do. Mess. I would call the mortgage company on the mobile home and say, I'm not paying anymore. Come get it. And what if I get like foreclosure? Like, would it, They're going to foreclose maybe, on you. That's a repossession. So would it be better to, to be foreclosed on or file bankruptcy? Be foreclosed on. And in terms into buying a home in the future, it, so I would if, like essentially I would like to buy a home for me and my three kids. You know, yeah, but that's going to be so, later. Right now, you owe seventy thousand dollars on something that you can't sell, and it's not worth but thirty five thousand if you could sell it, and you don't make enough to cover the difference. And so I yeah, would I would no. work with them on a short sale again drag him back to the table, have the uh, judge bring him back to the table with your lawyer if you have to, but if they won't do a short sale and he won't do a short sale, tell them, you're, just stop making payments on it. Come get it. And just live there until they come get it. Uh, eventually, they'll re mm -hmm. it's a repossession. It's not a foreclosure because it's not actually a piece of real estate. It's more like a car that you sleep in. Oh, okay. It's a UCC so it one in most states. Much? Yeah. yeah, and so, so it won't affect me as much. It's gonna no, it's gonna affect you. It's going to affect you big time. No, it's gonna I mess know. up your credit big time. But and bankruptcy can you see is me but, afterwards if I let it go. They may, they may, and then you can settle on that, and then you will be ready to buy a house. But I don't know how else you're getting out of it unless you just sit there and pay it off. You want to pay it off? Uh, no, that's that's another fourteen years. To no, no, it's not. It's only thirty-five thousand dollars. What do you make? 
Um, what on the home? I how much do you pay. make? Oh, um, a month about thirty five hundred. Okay, no, you owe seventy. You don't owe thirty five. Yeah, you're not going to pay it off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, so here here's your options. All right, um, you sit there and pay payments. That's option one. While it goes down in value and continues to fall apart. Option two is you file bankruptcy, in which case they will then repossess the property anyway, or repossess the mobile home anyway, and you will have a foreclosure and a bankruptcy or a repossession and a bankruptcy, depending on how it's looked at in Texas. Okay? And mm-hmm. uh, the only difference with the bankruptcy part is they won't be able to chase you for the difference. I would instead, I would just let them repo it and then negotiate the balance with them. The 35000 let's say they take it for the, the repossession and they sell it for 20000 That means you would owe them 50000 You can probably settle that for five or ten grand because they're not used to collecting deficits on mobile home repos. Mm-hmm. People who have $50,000 mm-hmm. laying around don't get repoed. Yeah. So they're not, okay. they're not expecting a reposition. Do you have a bunch of wealth or money you haven't told me about in this conversation? No, I no, I don't. I've been trying to work on the credit cards um, that I got left on yeah. after the divorce. And then, of course, you know, I went, I put myself to school. Um, okay, so, so when I you hang up, a year ago. when you hang up, call them and tell them you're not paying any more payments. And I want to begin, okay. I want to begin a negotiation on a short sale. So you guys can come pick this thing up or a voluntary repossession. And I want to begin a negotiation on that. And uh, if they say we don't do that, you say, well, you're getting ready to because I'm not paying any more payments. So you're going to have to come get it. And can they just give, what if one day I come home and they take my whole house and I don't have and all the stuff in it? Can well, they do that? That could happen. It's not going to happen quickly. You're probably going to have a lot of um belligerent conversations with them before that occurs. It won't be like the next day they show up with a big truck. They don't do that. You're going to have a lot of conversations with them, but stay in touch with them. Don't ignore them, and that way they won't surprise you. And just say, just let me know when you're coming, because I want you to come get it. And then when they come get it... I I want my stuff. I I know, I got that, but your stuff ain't worth anything. (laughs) You just want your, you know, you just want a couple of your pictures out of there, but you don't have any stuff. You throw, throw some stuff in the parents' basement and go get you an apartment as soon as you find out when they're going to come get it. It'll take them six months to get around to it. And in the meantime, I can pay off my credit card. Because you're not paying any house payments. Okay. Yeah, but you've, begun, you've already put them on notice. Now, understand, you still owe all the money even after they come get you. And understand, this, even though it's voluntary, this is still a repossession. And it's going to be three, four mm-hmm. years after this, after you get all this settled and cleaned up, before you get to go buy a house. But I don't know how you're going to get out of this three or four years sooner than that. I think that's the soonest you're going to well, be clear. Well, I mean, I guess I have to do what I have to do. It's, this is not where I want to live at and don't want to continue raising my kids here. No, want something. I think. Well, it's not. It, it, it doesn't put you. Uh, it doesn't put you in a good place. Twenty years from today, you know, and twenty years from today, you're still going to be in a dead gum mess if you don't take some action on this. And so, hopefully, you can create a short sale discussion with them and reopen that discussion with the ex. That's your best scenario. That's the least damage to your credit, but it's still very, very damaged. So we're not trying to save credit here. We're trying to save Lorena. <laughs> 